Guys, let's be real. Some cards are true masterpieces worthy of being painted atop the ceilings of centers of worship, while others belong in a fire pit used as fuel to melt marshmallows for s'mores. As a fun change of pace, I'll be sharing some of the cards I feel are deserving of being showcased in a fancy, high-profile New York art gallery and rant about the ones that draw a little vomit from my small intestine up to the back of my throat, which also tends to happen after my monster cheat meals. I'll also share some of your favorite and least favorite sets that you submitted to me. And guess what? I actually found a strong similarity between a lot of the feedback that can help Panini create a set that many of us would love. So welcome back, now let's get to work. Let's start with some of my favorite looking sets. And when I thought of doing this video, the number one set that came to mind was Flare Showcase. Uh, everything about this card just screamed class. It had this stunning refractor type of look and this fancy script font that it, it, it reminded me of like being invited to a fancy wedding. Plus you got two pictures of the athlete for the price of one. And that was awesome because one was typically an action pose while the other was more of a close up and intimate. Like you got to know who the person was, not just the player. It had a very nostalgic feel too, like uh, those music videos from back in the 80s and early 90s where it would show multiple angles of the singer layered on top of each other. Uh, just a beautiful set that would be worthy of dropping a lot of money on just based on how elegant it looked. Next up is 95 Tops Finest Basketball. Now, I was always a fan of Finest for a few reasons, but when I was researching this, I saw the 93 and 94 Finest, and personally, I think they just look horrible. 93 set looks like the designer was on shrooms when doing it, and then in 94, the metal looking backdrop just overpowers the player. Plus, there was so much color distortion in that set altogether. In 95, that's where I feel like they got their act together. The colors were bright, the background actually complemented the player instead of distracted me from him. Uh, and even in football, I thought what they did with the lightning bolts was super cool. It's, it's, it's like really 90s, but not in an embarrassing kind of way. The other reason I love Finest is because of the peel. You could actually alter the card, keep the peel on or peel it off. It was up to you, but if you messed it up, you could really hurt the value. Personally, I really love that option. And I think it'd be really cool to see Panini roll out with a set that you could alter in a similar way. Imagine if they had these high-end cards with a little section to scratch off, and if you scratch it off, you could win huge prizes. Um, kind of like a scratch-off ticket meets redemption cards, but you had the option not to scratch it off and never know what the prize could be. It's kind of like investing in sealed wax, but of a card. Uh, for example, if there's a prize of a one-of-one one Lucas still out there that hasn't been claimed yet, you could risk scratching off your card to see if you're the winner, or you could sell it to someone else who's willing to take that gamble. Anyway, on to number three, and I have to go with Select. Pretty much every year Select looks great to me, especially as you go through the ranks up to field level in football and courtside in basketball. Some of my favorites are 2015-2016 Premier Basketball, which kind of looks like a cheese grater, but in a good way. 2019 field level football is another beautiful design. And of course, 2012 Select, which reminds me of Miller High Life every time I see a Blazer, Bull, or Hawk player in that year. I also love the tricolor parallels and some of their inserts. To me, Select just does a great job of balancing an upscale look with bright and colorful, which is where a lot of the other sets fall short. Now the fun part, let's rant about some of the fuggliest cards in existence. You guys already know that I think 2012 Prism looks like it was originally meant to keep a burrito warm and intact, so I won't spend much time there. However, a few years before 2012, there was a period when Panini was taking over the license from Topps for the NBA, and I feel like this was the era of the worst looking basketball cards. From 2009 to 2011, it looked like Panini was just getting their feet wet with basketball, and it would just take a couple years for them to evolve out of what they were doing with hockey stickers and soccer cards and stickers as well, and work their way up to the advanced looking shiny sets that collectors love. But there is one specific card that is just so bad that it inspired me to make this entire video, and it wasn't produced by Panini. It was actually put out by Topps, who is perhaps my favorite manufacturer of all time, but they released this rookie card back in 2009, uh, their final year of owning the license, and I want to see if you can guess what it is before I show you. What the hell is that noise outside? 
It is the 2009 James Harden rookie card. I don't know what happened here. Like, why would you pick this shot? This is as close as it gets to a mug shot that you would use on a library card. It's not even an action pose, and he's not even smiling like Steph Curry and Blake Griffin are in their rookie cards. I know James Harden is not known to go around and smile, but was that really the best you can do? I'm thinking that whoever was on that project was just on a tight deadline, and they figured that this guy that wears a t-shirt under his jersey and comes from Arizona State, which is well known as a top party school, would end up being a nobody and forgotten about, and that card would just disappear in the dollar bins of of flea markets all over. I'm sorry, but if I own that card, it would be face down on my desk. Just looking at it makes me feel worse about life. Uh, not saying it's a bad investment, just saying James Harden got screwed on his rookie card, and the only player I feel like got it worse that year was Drew Holiday. Now on to what you guys had voted for as some of your most and least favorite cards. Let's start with your favorites, and there were several votes for metal, and here's what I realized about metal. For one, I love the set. Uh, it was creative, it was strong, but more than anything, it was really manly. It was like I look at it and I instantly feel more badass that I'm collecting cardboard pictures of these world-class athletes, even though I'm just laying on the couch eating donuts and drinking Dr. Pepper. There were also multiple votes for a Flair Showcase, and then Mark Webster mentioned 1955 Baseball, and what's crazy is if you take a look in that year, 1955 Bowman looks like you're watching the player through a TV, which I thought was pretty cool. I mean, like, I think they should just start putting wood on everything again. Wood panel cars, wood panel TVs, wood panel like, blenders. But anyway, now if you take a look at 1955 Tops, doesn't it resemble Flare Showcase? You have a close up and an action shot. That's pretty cool. And check this out. Brett Matheson said he really liked 2020 Topps Gold Label. And when you look at that set, again, it's like Flair Showcase. You have an action shot paired with a portrait in the background. I personally think there's something there. We like two photos showing the different sides of the player. And um, I know Illusions kind of attempts to do this, but I just don't think they execute very well. Uh, Joseph Serpico said he liked Illusions, while Select and Collect says he didn't. Uh, regardless, I think there's opportunity for Panini to design a set that really nails that flair showcase style. There were also other individual votes for different sets, but now let's go over your fugliest sets, and there were three that got multiple votes. So the first one is 2020 Bowman Platinum, and I had to look this up because I don't deal much with baseball, but based on the name, I thought it would look really good. I mean, when you think about it, Platinum is an expensive rare metal, Every time you go to sign up for a membership, the Platinum Package is always the most expensive one and has all the bells and whistles. And then when I looked it up, not only did the cards look cheap, but then there was a Walmart edition. Like, you don't combine the word Platinum with Walmart. It's like, you don't combine Diamond with Taco Bell. And nothing against any of these companies, but that just doesn't fit with their brand and who they're going for. And as for the cards themselves, they look way more Walmart than Platinum. There were also multiple votes for 2017 Optic Basketball. Uh, personally, I don't really have an issue with the set, but 2017 Donners had that brown look, which was a pretty rough combination. Mini Cookie said that he liked Optic, but not a fan of the poo. Not a fan of the poo. And that brings me to the number one set that you found the fuggliest of all, and that is... Just uh, threw up in my mouth a little bit. That is the ugliest effing set I've ever seen. And I was trying to think about what Fleer was going for that year, if they were just trying to scare people away from the hobby or, or what. And I think the most likely scenario was that they were on a really tight budget for that project and whoever was in charge just called up Michael's Craft Store and said, look, we're on this really tight budget and we need some paper ASAP to make all these baseball cards. What do you got? And the rep at Michael said, oh, oh, we got you. We have this one paper that's perfect for your budget. The only thing is that you might not like the color. Fleer rep goes, oh, I'm sure it's fine. We'll take enough for 5 million cards. And boom, that's how Fleer owns the title of the ugliest set in human history. Now I wanna hear from you. If you could tell Panini to recreate a set from the past you think the hobby would love, would it be a style like Flair Showcase or would it be something else? Leave it in the comment section below and remember that your input about eBay got a rep to reach out to me within hours, so don't underestimate our reach or their willingness to listen. 
Thanks to everyone that offered their input, and I will see you guys next time. Originally meant to keep a keep a keep a keep a burrito warm, keep up a burrito warm, keep up a burrito.